Alright, this video is going to be on how to make a Sith holocron prop and some of the some of the materials we're going to need is glue such as super glue, hot glue, or contact cement. I actually use all three in this. Uh, EVA craft foam. I used 5mm and 2mm in this build. And some discarded packaging plastic. Uh, I'll show you that a little later. That's what I made these panels out of and the interior pyramid as well and to light it up I used a headlamp that I had from previous builds on lightsabers I had bought these flashlights on the lightsaber builds to make different stunt sabers and they came with all these extra headlamps and they're 150 watts or sorry, 150 lumens, so they're pretty bright. All right, so let's get started. All right, today I'm gonna make a prop out of some junk, and uh, I have this piece of transparent plastic here, and what this is from is from some packaging from my kids' Pokemon cards, just clear plastic. And I took this piece of paper here I cut out from a computer printout that I found online of a holocron design. And I took some packing tape and put over the design on the front and back and then I cut it out and using some household masking tape I just simply taped it to this. Next, I took a screw, a rather long wood screw, and I wrapped some pieces of scrap EVA foam around it, and I just taped that off with some regular old black electric tape. And what I'm doing is, I'm going through here, and I'm scratching in the design. I guess kind of a poor man's engraving. And... You can see here on the other one I already have finished. You can see it's transferred onto the plastic just by scratching the design in. And I'm going to go ahead and do this a total of four times to have four sides. And I'll tell you, it's a long, slow, tedious process to scratch all this in. And I've never done this build before, so let's hope this works out. Okay, and with all that time, all I've gotten done is this little triangle here at the top. That gives you an idea of how carefully and slowly I'm doing this. And despite all that, it still doesn't come out looking perfect. Okay, so now that you've done all four of these, and they're all complete, next you're going to go ahead and... Take your original pattern that you covered in packing tape and cut out. And you're going to take razor blade. Or an X-Acto knife. You're going to cut out your centerpiece and I'm cutting I usually don't use my wrist I will pull my whole arm along with it and that helps to get a nice straight and even cut. Over and 
and true up the back. Okay, and then once you pop out your centerpiece, this is going to be your main pattern. I'm probably not going to cut these side pieces out. It's just going to make it too thin and flimsy because what I'm going to be cutting these pieces out of is some thin EVA foam. And I already went ahead and heated this up to make it a little bit stiffer. I am, however, going to cut a small triangle out of the top here now you can have, this will represent the capstone, you can have some light shining through. I took my pattern and a regular old ballpoint pen and drew the pattern onto the foam. And you'll notice that I've drawn all four at once. And the reason for this is I'm going to cut all four at once. And the reason for me cutting all four simultaneously is I've noticed any time that I do something, I come back later and I'm like, well, was I cutting on the inside of the line or on the outside of the line or directly on the line? How did I do this? So I just do it all in one quick uh, movement. And for these outside edges especially, I'm not going to hold the X-Acto knife straight. It's going to be at an angle when I'm cutting. So I get a nice beveled edge, and you want that because you want all four sides of this to line up into a pyramid, which is not easy to do. Yeah, I'm not sure how well you can see that, but see the edge has somewhat of an angle to it. Okay, and you're going to do that with all four. I've got these all four cut out. I line them up to make sure they're all the same height and the same size and they all match up exactly. I'm not so much worried about the inner cutouts as I am about the outer cutouts. And they all look pretty symmetrical, so next I'm going to take the plates here that I've etched the design onto. I'm going to go ahead and glue them to the back side of these. And to do that I'm going to use some contact cement. Sorry, I actually forgot a step. Before I glue them to the back side, which is the side where the beveled edge is pointing in, I'm going to go ahead and seal up the outsides of them with some Mod Podge. Go ahead and apply it pretty thick. The foam will absorb it. And I'm not going to plasti dip this. I'm just going to Mod Podge it. Let the Mod Podge dry. And once that's all dried, I'm going to go ahead and take some gold spray paint. And I'm going to hit it with that. And the reason why I'm using the Mod Podge is because I don't want the foam to absorb all the paint and it has a tendency to do that and then it just looks bad 
Uh, Plastidip, in a sense, I suppose is kind of easier just because it's a one and done. But since I want this to represent metal, I want when the light hits it, I want to be able to see the brush strokes to give it kind of a grain look as if it's metal that's been processed. So yeah, initially I was just going to glue these to it, but upon second thought, that's not really a good idea. Because uh, I would have to mask all this off to paint it. And I realized I'd save myself so much time by simply sealing the foam with some Mod Podge and then hitting it with some of this Rust-Oleum Universal Metallic Paint and Primer. This is gold. But you can technically do your Holocron, whatever color you want. Okay, this is nice and covered. I'm going to let this dry and then get back to gluing these pieces on. Alright, my pieces have dried. I've got them flipped over. Now I'm going to take some contact cement and I'm going to apply it around this edge here, around these edges here, and let it set for 15 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and glue it together. Okay, now that I've got these all glued together, I decided to put the engraved side on the inside. And next, I'm going to take some more contact cement and apply it to these edges. I guess I'm going to have to try and form these into a pyramid with all four sides. So I'm going to contact cement the edges and then stick them together. I'll come back and see how well I did or didn't do. Okay, so as you can see, I got it looking pretty good here. And I took a piece of paper and a pen and I traced around the base and cut this out and that's going to act as the template for our base. I'm going to be drawing the template onto a piece of 5mm EVA foam. Okay, here I've cut my base out of the 5mm foam and you can see I've beveled the edges again so it has that angle. And that is so that my pyramid will sit nice and flush on top of it and it's not sticking out the bottom now the next thing you're going to want to figure out is whether you want to light this and what you're going to use now initially I thought about using this little candle it's kind of cool but not really so if you look at pictures of it there's a separate pyramid inside so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take this headlamp and I'm going to trace around the face here so I can fit it through here and cut out a hole for it. And after I figure out how big that is and cut the hole out, I'm going to go ahead and uh, start constructing the inner pyramid that's going to go on here. And I'm going to make that out of the same type of plastic. I'm just going to take a piece of scrap paper, cut out a triangle, use that as a template, and then go ahead and repeat that several times over to get the four-sided pyramid to go on the inside. So I've taken my headlamp and I cut off the straps that were on here. Although I am going to leave this piece on because it covers the battery pack. It sits pretty even. Then you can see I've cut my hole in the base and the top pyramid will fit on this. But next I'm going to build a smaller inner pyramid. Okay, And in order to get the light to go from the whitish blue color that it is, I took a red sharpie and just colored over the light. That'll give it a reddish color 
whenever you turn it on, make your holocron look pretty sweet. Since I want the inner pyramid to retain pretty much the same shape as the outer one, I just printed off the outer one smaller in scale, and I put some tape over it. Now I'm going to go through and cut that out and use it as a template for my plastic pieces. I'm going to make out of the same plastic packaging I used for the clear pieces on the outer pyramid. Alright, so using my template, I have cut out four small plastic triangle pieces. I've already put some contact cement on the edges. And I'm going to glue them together in a pyramid similar to the other one. And while I am waiting for the pieces of the inner pyramid to dry, I'm going to go ahead and mod podge this. Let that dry and move on to spray painting it gold, same as the outer pieces. I've got my inner pyramid glued together. I used a couple beads of hot glue to help hold it in place. This of course is going to sit over this hole. And I've mod podged this and I'm going to move on to spray painting. And for the inner base, same as before, I'm using this Rust-Oleum metallic paint and primer. And I've mod podged this. You can see it's dried and I've got those brush strokes in there to give it some texture. Go ahead and spray it up. that dry for a few hours until it's ready to handle and in the meantime I'm going to start working on the inner pyramid. Next I'm going to use a brush and some of this paint called Model Masters. Uh, this is gold and I'm going to be painting the tip here. gold and I'm also going to be painting probably the border around the bottom just the very edge okay I have painted the pyramid with the model masters and just wanted to give it kind of a more of an organic feel here on the edges I was going to mask it and do it straight but instead I wanted it to look unique with only the capstone having straight edges. Uh, since this is going to be the center of the holocron, it's essentially the heart, so I wanted it to look slightly more organic and less mechanical. Keep in mind that anytime you use Model Masters paint or any sort of enamel paint, you're going to need odorless mineral spirits to clean your brush. If you don't have it, it'll dry and your brush will be as hard as a rock and it'll be ruined. You can't use water. Okay, now that the base is dry, I want to attach this to this. And you can see that it's just not quite level. So I'm going to put a little bit of super glue on this side over here, and a little bit of hot glue here. And while the hot glue is cooling, I'm going to level this out as much as possible. Okay, that looks pretty level. Let that cool. Okay, now that all the pieces are here, it's just putting them together. So first I'm going to do the inner pyramid. And I put some dots here where the corners are. And I'm just going to run some contact cement on here on the bottom of this. And then put it together. Okay, so I put contact cement on this edge. And also in here on the inside of the holocron, all that is left is to set it into place. Make sure that it's nice and even. Now 
now that that's all assembled, I'm just going to go through and do some touch up with the Model Masters Gold. And I'm going to put some extra hot glue on here to help seal this edge in. And then it'll be ready to light up and see how it looks. Alright, so here it is completed. And I've got it in this slightly shadowed area. Because... Turn it on. Now this is on the high setting. This is 150 lumens. It's pretty bright. Okay. down in the lower setting there we go it's not so obnoxious all right Let's see what this looks like in the dark This is the high setting, 150 lumens. Here we go with the lower setting. So yeah, overall I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. And you could always make this more sturdy by making these outer pieces out of warbler, or these inner pieces out of plexiglass, or say acrylic and yeah hopefully this was helpful and hope you guys enjoyed the video and this inspired you to make something cool and as always thanks for watching